Hello, and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager 2 stream. My name is Adam. I am the Community Manager of Franchise Hockey. With me, as always, is FHM producer Jeff, who is currently on your screen. Hey, everybody. And we are back with the 1981 Winnipeg Jets. It's been a f number of weeks since we played with them. So yes, yeah, so our apologies for um, suddenly canceling at the last minute last week. Uh, we uh, were literally right about to go, and... Uh, Windows 10 decided to do some strange things to my system, and that killed the broadcast for last week. So thank you, Microsoft. But uh, we're yes. back now and uh, ready to go by with the 81-82 Jets. Uh, we uh, yeah we had our season opener. We played that at the end of the last broadcast, uh, and uh, that was a 5-4 win for us. We almost threw it away, but managed to pull it out at the last minute. Well, we also had our draft last episode, if I remember correctly. Yeah, when we wound up, uh, fortunately enough, getting Dale Howarchuk, uh, who was the Jets' uh, real pick that year. And uh, as it turns out, we've actually got both their number ones for the first two years in the game, so we're not exactly being too imaginative, but... Uh, Sometimes that's okay. Yep, uh, The although you'd hope we'd do a little bit better in the uh, middle of the 80s than the actual Jets did. <laughs> well, yes, hopefully we beat you know, the Oilers a few more times. Yep. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, we will probably sim fairly quickly through this uh, season. I'm probably going to go about, uh, say, a month at a time and uh, just see how we're doing and drop in at the beginning of every, every month and make a few changes, look at the stats and see what's going on. Uh, so I want to autoplay until next month. And uh, the game will interrupt us uh, like it did just uh, there. It looks like we've got one injury on our defense. Uh, it's only a bruised thumb. Scott Campbell's out day to day, but uh, Matty Hagman's got something wrong. That's worrying. Blurred vision day to day, so he can play. He's just not going to be able to see too well. And looks like we lost our second game of the season 5 nothing to the Rangers. So... Uh -oh. That's rough. Yeah, the Rangers are actually pretty good uh, in this game. So, uh, not too bad, but uh, we won't worry about it. Worry about it too much yet. But let's see how this goes. Yeah, it looks like we won a couple in a row there, and again stopped because there's an injury, and we got a few messages. So I'll take a look at those after I check that. Uh, Willie Lindstrom sprained his thumb, so we're gonna have to shuffle the lineup a little bit. But what I can do there is just drop Peter Marsh right in since we've had him sitting on the bench and he can play right wing and he should be able to fit nicely into the spots Lindstrom was in although I think I'll move Dave Christian up to the first line to cover for him sounds like a good plan uh, I think that's good enough shootout spots we don't actually have a shootout but <laughs> So it's the early 80s. Uh, what do we got going on here? In all fairness, the early 80s really didn't need any shootouts. Yep, uh, looks like we oh, we managed to injure a former Jet. Kent Nielsen uh, got hurt in our game against the Flames. Scouting report. I've got the uh, scouting on computers, so uh, we won't have to keep checking back in on that. And how are we doing so far? We're 3-1-0. Oh. Nice start to the season. Although it looks like everybody in the Norris is doing pretty well to begin the year. Uh, Stars and Blues both undefeated, so we're going to have to keep going if we want to make the playoffs again last year, which we just kind of snuck into at the last minute. I will fire that up again. And now it's coffee getting hurt. We're getting hit with a lot of little injuries so far. And I can take Marsh out of the lineup. And Lindstrom back in. Looks like we had a loss to Buffalo uh, in there. I think I'll leave Christian on the first line. Uh, he's probably got a little bit more room to grow than uh, Lindstrom does. And a little trade between the Flyers and Kings. Looks like the Kings fired their coach too, uh, so... They must not be, oh yeah, one, four, and two start. It's a little quick for him to be firing the guy, but... Well, he must have been on thin ice. 
Yeah, I guess he was. Uh, and Willie Lindstrom gets hurt again. Yeah, of course he does. Oh, no. Okay, that's not good. Bone chips in his elbow and he's out for four months this time. So he's going on the injured list. Ouch, that's a painful injury. Yeah, I'm going to leave. I won't call anybody up, but I, since I've got Marsh there that I can just drop right into his position. Although... Yeah, I'll put you know I'll use Marsh on the second line to begin. Actually, I'm going to give his. I'm going to put him on the second line, but I'm going to give the power play time to Lube. Makes sense. Yeah, young guy can probably use it. Anything else going on? Scouting and. Sheet Hartford, and we're. Drop down to 500. So I've got a, we're almost to the end of October. Let's just get through to there. Okay, we're end of October and we're really falling apart now. We're 3, 5, and 2, so we lost a couple more there. Let's just take a quick look at what exactly happened. 7-5 uh, lost to the Blackhawks and 3-2 to the Jets, or 3-2 to the Leafs. I was going to say, we lost to ourselves? Yeah, that's... that's <laughs> You know things are going a really bad when. I'm just having a quick look through here to see what's going on. Uh, okay, let's check out our stats and see who's doing well and who isn't. Doug Smale, surprisingly enough, uh, leading the team in scoring. Of yeah, I kept trying is. to force him onto the first lines, and I uh, kept pushing him down. Looks like he's uh, making a case for himself there. Coffee doing reason well. Howard Chuck, not bad. I mean, he's, Howard Chuck starts out uh, a fairly low rating. He was actually much better than this in his rookie year in real life. So hopefully he'll come up the curve pretty quickly. Uh, Lukowicz, oh boy. He's, that's, that's starting to get worrying because we've seen a bunch of skill drop-offs from Lukowicz, who started out as our best player. Now he's got to three points in the first ten games. Eh. And Dan Bouchard uh, playing pretty well in goal. Uh, Richard Berder not quite as well, so maybe switch them up for a little while. Sorting by the game ratings. Coffee Hagman, we'll see. yeah, about who you'd expect near the top. And yeah, Jimmy Mann. And, oh boy, Barry Melrose is not looking good. No, he fell off a cliff pretty yeah, hard. Yeah, that uh, mullet's weighing him down, I think. <laughs> so I am going to take him out of the lineup. We'll let uh, Claude Julien go in. Let's see, rotating future coaches. I don't think, I'm actually going to move. try moving Lube up to the second line and leave Marsh a little farther down. And in the news, nothing too interesting. Let's have a look at the development report. Mostly good news. Uh, just a couple of minor leaguers who aren't were declining. That's not a big deal. Luka, which no. fortunately didn't go down. And taking a quick glance through here to see if anybody's jumped up a half star rating or so, but does not look like it. Disappointing. Yeah, we must be getting. We've got to be getting close on a few guys, especially Coffee. I mean, he's got his three stars now and five star potential, and Howard Chuck is two stars. It's claiming three star potential for him, which is really weird. He should be a lot higher than that. Howard Chuck? Yeah, Howard Chuck. I could go. I think that oh, may I mean, be our scouts uh, being horribly wrong about him. In our in my save, it's three and a half star. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure what's going on with that. That's. Hopefully nothing to be concerned about, but uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Maybe he's not playing enough? What's his minutes like, average minutes? Uh, I thought those were pretty good because we had him on the first line. 15 minutes a game, not bad. No, that's not too bad. Game rating isn't spectacular. Uh, let me just take a quick look at the training view. Any power play time, too? Uh, he's uh, he's in a little bit over his head competition-wise. That's going to cause a bit of a problem. Hmm. But no, it shouldn't really have that huge an effect because he's got to be pretty close. 
And okay. power play time, yeah, he's the second on the second unit power plays team, so uh, well, I'll keep an eye on well, him. And if it's in all safe, fairness, we're still not a very good team. Yeah, true. If he's uh, still sitting at two stars, I'd know by Christmas, so we might want to think about sending him back down to junior because on the theory that uh, he's you know, over his head at this point, he shouldn't be, but for some reason he's struggling a bit. But yeah. uh, let's go one more month here and see what we get. So we weren't doing great, but I didn't see the reason to make any major changes. And what did I miss here? Oh, three on five penalty kill. And four on five third unit, okay. Um, Mr. Goaltending seems to be holding up a little bit. Yeah, and uh, now Peter Marsh gets injured. So our injury replacement is injured. No, Torres ACL, so that's another right wing down for the season. He's gone for nine months, so forget about him coming back. And I'm going to have to call somebody up now, so... Looking at our reserve list, uh, if you haven't seen that, the historical game before, uh, there's not a separate farm team there. All the players are handled uh, via the reserve list, which is just sort of an abstracted version of a farm or a junior team. So they'll continue developing normally. I have not got a good right winger down there, though. Um, what do we got for our centermen, at least? Not much there either. We've got some guys with, you know, Scott O'Neill, Brian Scrudland, who've got potential, but they're only two stars right now, and I definitely don't want to throw them into the lineup like that. Well, I've, Scott O'Neill was a draft pick. Wasn't he our second-round draft pick in time? Yeah, I see, and the Jets' real pick last year. He was uh, Howard Chuck's teammate in Cornwall in the OHL. Uh, or I guess, yeah, that was when they, that was when Cornwall was still in the QMJHL QM, uh, in junior the previous year, too. Coach. Yep. Columbus coach, current assistant with New York, if I remember right. Yeah, and I think I'm just going to call Dave Hoyt up, who's just going to sit on the bench for us, but we're going to have to move one of our, <laughs> Dave uh, yeah, and let Brad Palmer play, and we're going to have to shuffle our lines around now, though, because he's a left wing, and wow, we're shorter right wings. Who's got the highest we can move? Actually, I'm going to see what the AI does first. AI actually wants to put Dale Howardchuck in the fourth line right wing. I don't think we'll be doing that. No, but maybe it's time to take him to the second line. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to try Ron Flockhart uh, there uh, on the first line. Howard Chuck on the second, uh, and then Steen on the fourth line. That's weird. Why are we putting... Yeah, I wanted to put uh, Jimmy Mann as the left wing on the fourth line, as well as the fourth line right wing. Strange. Uh, you want him to be on both sides? Yeah. Or, well, third yeah. line and fourth line. Third, oh. third line right wing, fourth line left wing. So I don't know why I would do that when we've... We're desperately short of right wings to begin with. Uh, special teams. Howard Chuck goes in for Wilson on the second units, but other than that, I think we're solid. So at this point, we're really hoping that... Oh, wow, well, the AI wants to put Lube on the first line. I don't think so. I'm just going to say, oh, we're hoping Lube really uh, improves quickly. He's up to... Or no, he was at two and a half stars. Seven points in 15 games. Okay. And our board confidence, uh, well, they're disappointed in us. Let's just take a quick look at where they actually are. Their drop security is still fine, so nothing to oh, worry about good. there at this point. And Guy Lafleur uh, gets hurt. Of so course he does. Injury starting about a year later than they did in real life, uh, but he gets hurt against the Nordiques, so typical <laughs> uh, Abs Nordiques game. Somebody... Insert and scouting, nothing too interesting there, and another minor league deal. 
All right, let's play the rest of the month here, and hopefully we get through this relatively injury-free. Of course we don't. Ron Wilson's now hurt day-to-day. -day. But I don't have to take him out, so I'm just going to roll right through that. But I think we're going to have to make some changes at the end of this month, because we're now in last place overall in the Campbell. Uh-oh. That's and not a good sign. Yet another right wing goes down. It's lube, but it looks like it's only day-to-day, -day, thank God. Sore back, that's all. So where are we? November 11th? Is that what I said? I'm um, November 22nd. November. I'm just going to take this up to December okay. 1st, and then we'll decide what the heck to do here. Well, Vancouver's falling apart this year as well. This was the year that they made it to the finals in real life. Okay. With a sub-500 record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was possible back then. We're 5, 16, and 3. Wow. How many games in a row have we lost? We just tied the Flyers, but other than that, oh boy, what a train wreck. Went 0-4 on a road trip. Wow, it's just one loss after another. That is not impressive. Yes. Okay, well. let's dig through this, uh, see if there's anything. we got scouting reports, another development report, and Lukowicz, oh, at least he, he lost a point, but it was only from his fighting, but still worries me. Well, if we want to sign a free agent, there's a three-star free agent we can get for right wing. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, I'm thinking that Should may be, be an cool. option because I'm not... You know, Jimmy Mann isn't exactly cutting it in third-line right wing time. So who there's we got out there? Names. Steve Gatz. Gatzos. Gatzos. He was a penguin in uh, real life. Oh, no. God. Paul Higgins is on there, too. Uh, Higgins was... How the heck did he get a three-star rating? Uh, probably the worst goon in the history of the NHL. The Leafs, he was playing... Uh, he, even, he played a little bit of junior. I think he got kicked out of the OHL at one point. And the Leafs literally just brought him, brought him in to do nothing but beat up people. Well, that's and it was a, yeah, the media, It was a media circus around him. Uh, it was uh, the you know, typical Harold Ballard year stuff. But yeah. I, I don't think I want him on a team. But Gatsos was a decent right wing. Never really made it, uh, but kind of a career minor league guy. Also at center, there's Risto Jallo, who's a 2.53 guy. Yeah, let me see if there's anybody with a potential higher than... No, oh, Gord Shervin's on there, Canadian uh, Olympian. I believe he's only a three-star, though. Yeah, three well. And eight, well, he's three-and-a-half-star potential, one-and-a-half-star ability, so like, he's no good to me right now. But I think you're right, and uh, Gatsos is probably the guy we need to get. Well, both those guys I just mentioned are AA-rated. Risto Jallo is also a 3.08. Yeah. I think we're a little overloaded on centers now, though, so I'm going to go with uh, Gatsos and see what he wants. Hopefully it's something reasonable. Well, Jallo has a little bit of ability on left wing. Hmm. It's at 12. Okay, gets us once three years at uh, minimum. I can easily afford that, so let's give it to him. I'm just going to take a quick peek on some trade blocks, see if there's anybody worthwhile. Yeah. And we're at... Well, we had only... At, oh, we had two guys on the injury list, that's why. So I will uh, sit Brad Palmer back down since he's done absolutely nothing in his playing time. Gatsos gets dressed. Uh, Julianne's been just as bad as Melrose was, so... Let's go down to the farm team, and uh, I'm going to send... I'm going to leave Mel Melrose on the active roster, but I'm going to send Julianne down. I think this was Tulsa, the CHL was their farm team. Uh, I believe so, yes. At that point. Who's now what the Tulsa's their ECHL team, isn't it? Their current Jets? Uh, I believe so, yes. Uh, Tulsa Oilers, if yep. memory serves right. Yeah, that's what it was back then, too. And I will bring up. I'm probably I'm making the same mistake the Knox did here in real life, but I'm going to bring up Anders Elderbrink. Uh, they tried playing him too soon, and that screwed up his development. He wound up going back to Sweden and turned into a pretty good player. But never came back to the NHL, so let's hope it doesn't work out this, in that way in uh, this game. And Very much so. What will the AI do with that? Yeah, see, it still wants... It's really not thrilled with having Howard Chuck on the top line. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to totally juggle this around. Smale, Steen, and uh, not Howard. I'm gonna try Howard Chuck on the third line, but keep him, keep giving him uh, power play time. Take a little bit of the pressure off him, and he can play with a new guy, Gatsos, and uh, Smale, who's been doing pretty well. Sure. Other than that. Yeah, I think that's about all the changes I'll make for now. Yeah, it's just Gatso signing our deal. We get the announcement of it. And what's the schedule looking like in the next little while? Uh, a couple of games at home here. Pittsburgh. Okay, Pittsburgh. Gatso, that's his old team, so they're playing them today. Let's uh, play through that one quickly and just, just, you know, if we can see what's going wrong, maybe. And just looking over the Penguins roster, looks fairly similar to what the real one was. Uh, Urquillo, Greg Malone, Mark Johnson, Randy Carlisle, who uh, probably not coming over to the Jets in this game like he actually did. Then I got Radicalio, Stanko. So it looks like a decent team there. What? Oh no, 7 14 and 3. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, we should have a good chance at this one. I guess we'll find out. And I will just set it to the uh, scoring summary so we can just see the goals. And I'll go period by period here. And yeah, so we just don't have the, those, those injuries are maybe hurting us a little more than I expected because we've got our depth is so thin at this point. We lose a couple of guys. Oh, there we go up one nothing. Matty Hagman gets the first goal for us, I think, on the first shot of the game. Excellent. So, Jeff, it's been a while since we talked, too. And the yeah. Jets had their roster announcement for their... Uh, what's a good word for this? Heritage Teams versus Edmonton. The alumni roster. Oh, the old-timer yeah. team. Okay, yeah. I, know. I saw Gretzky was playing uh, for Edmonton, and uh, who was a big one? Uh, who had somebody, I can't remember who it was, for the Jets. Well, uh, Solani. Solani, da da da. Yeah, that's. Yeah. So Solani's got to be still in half decent shape. Uh, some of those Oilers, old Oilers guys are. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you did you see the teams? Uh, not the whole rosters. No, just I okay, saw the well, announcement yeah. of the, the first couple. So here's a quick rundown then. Edmonton. Bobby Hall playing? Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> I don't think he could skate anymore. What? He's in the seventies. Ed... <laughs> well, we'll go over Edmonton just so you get a feeling how they are. Yep. So they're heavily stacked with the 80s, with uh, Grant Fear and Bill Ranford in that. Yep. Kevin Lowe, Paul Coffey, Charlie Huddy, Randy Gregg, Marty McSorley on D. It's all 80s uh, guys so far. <laughs> yeah. On forward, you have Gretzky, Dave Semenko, Mark Messier, Glenn Anderson, Yeri Curry, Kelly Buckberger, Ken Linesman. Craig McTavish, Craig Simpson, Ryan Smith, Essa Tikkanen, and B.J. McDonald. So basically the only relatively modern guy is Ryan Smith. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I see we keep scoring, so oh, that's got good. B.J. McDonald, they've got, they're have got bringing back the old yep. WHA guys, although they played, they played in the NHL for him for a while. And yeah, we're up 4-1 on this, so, so much for finding our problems. Maybe we just got to watch the games from now on. <laughs> Apparently. Now the Jets. Now the Jets brought back one of my favorite goalie names ever to be in that. I don't know if you heard this. Bob Essenza is apparently the only goalie signed up to play so far. Oh, I thought you were going to say Pokey Reddick. <laughs> <laughs> no, just Bob Essenza. Which, mm -hmm. uh, fun fact, I used to call him Bob Pizza because I can never say Essenza correctly. <laughs> you seem to be managing now. Yeah, exactly. So they have signed up to play on defense. Dave Babich, Dave Ellett. Mike Ford, yeah. Jim wife, Kite. Who? Mike Ford? Yeah, Mike Ford. <laughs> who the hell's uh, Mike Jim Ford? Kite. <laughs> I yeah. gotta look that up. <laughs> yeah, I think he was a 70s guy. Uh, uh, sorry, Jim Kite, Mario Maros, Mo Mantha, Teppo Newmanen, who I actually have his autograph directly above me right now, and Tim Waters. 
So okay. that's just some old guy. Yeah, I just looked up Mike Ford. He's like from the yeah early like yeah. 74, 75 Jets. Wow. Don't remember yeah. him at all. So on Ford, we have, of course, Dale Howarchuk, Thomas Steen, Laurie Boschman, Mike Eagles. Now there's a big Jet star. <laughs> Chris King, Morris Lukowicz, Andrew McBain, Brian Mullen, Darren Shannon, Doug Smale, and Ron Wilson. Yeah, so it's there's you know a lot of eighty guy eighties guys in there, one seventies guy, but they've got I think a few young, more younger guys in the Oilers too. And by the way, yes, we somehow you, managed to hand back that lead, and it's four four now. Of course we did. So I think we maybe need to look at. Uh, Wait, that was the first period. Yeah, that was the first period. Hey, it's the eighties. <laughs> four four so, after one period, although it looks like nothing at all is happening in the second. No scoring uh, I, yet. I also forgot to mention who the coaches are. So Edmonton has a Glenn Sather, of course, and Ron Lowe coaching. But the Jets, after his protest and said he would, quote, drive to Winnipeg if he had to, so he'd be behind the bench, is Tom McVie. Wow, Tom McVie's still alive? Yeah, he was, as soon as he heard this, he said he was coming no matter what. Wow, I thought <laughs> so he must be in his 80s by now, isn't he? I believe so. And Serge Savard is coming to stand behind the bench. Uh, he's not going to play? <laughs> no. For that half a season he had in Winnipeg? Oh, he was there for more than that. No, Tom McVie either... is 81. Didn't he? I thought he, he was retired. Then they, they came back. They signed him as a free agent for like uh, 40 or 50 games. Did he play a second season? Can't remember. Let me look here. Uh, yeah, he played 47 and 76. Oh, okay, so he did play that. Long enough. For some reason, I was thinking yeah. he only played that half a season for him. And we're 5-5 yeah. five, five here, and we just went down 6-5. Come on, guys. It looks like uh, Pittsburgh actually pulled their goalie at some point in the first, and uh, they've been doing fine since then. And we just pulled ours. Uh, and it looks like we're about to go goals? down 7-5. This is not good at all. And they just tipped one in. Andre Savard makes it 7-5 for Pittsburgh. Wow. What is with us? Okay, looks like we might be getting one back here. Yeah, Morris Lukowicz gets one for us. So he's finally scoring a little bit at least on the power play. 7-6. 1980s all the way. But sure enough, uh, Richard lets one in. It's now 8-6. So let's hope we can keep them out of double figures at least. Scary thing is the shots are only 29-20 for them. <laughs> There's been 14 goals. Well, that's typical 80s hockey. Yeah. And yeah, just... Not enough from us this time. Eight to six final score. Ah, let's take a look at the box scores. As much as I don't want to look at it, uh, yeah, it was. We go up four one. We blew that lead. Uh, they killed us on face offs. Forty seven twenty five. Oh, uh, looks like we took a ton of penalties. How many power plays were they looking at here? Yeah, nine power plays for them, three for us. That's what did it. Ouch. And Steve Gatsos, uh, so much for him playing his first game against his former team. Uh, minus three and a game rating of 41. Yeah, of course. That whole line was terrible. Howard, Chuck, Smale, and Gatsos. Minus three, minus three, minus four. And the game ratings are all in the 40s. Wow. I will uh, give them a couple more games, but not not much longer than that. Let's just sim through the next week. Hopefully we can make it with no injuries. Lost another one. Uh, and the board is still complaining. Of course they are. We or, probably took a big hit. Yeah, job security is down uh, halfway through the bar now. We're in yellow as opposed to green. Okay, That's I really don't want to get fired in this game. Uh, 
What can I do here? Turn on not not getting fired. That's cheating. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try sitting Jimmy Man down. Okay, while you do that, we have a question from the chat. Oh, there we and go. this comes from NWS Cooter. Question regarding the training values out of five. If you have more assistant coaches, does the does it dilute the number, you know, the average, or does the game use the top assistance value? It uses the uses the top assistance value and the head coach's value. So depending on how your head coach and the head coach weighting is a little bit higher than the assistants for everything except goaltending. Uh, if your so if your head coach is a little bit ratings are a little bit lower, you you may have trouble getting it all the way up to five. But uh, adding and you can't just add more coaches and get the rating up that way. So generally, you what you're going to want to have probably at least two decent, ideally you know one or two assistants with a decent score in all of the categories that you're trying to raise the score in. And what am I doing here? Uh, yeah, which also on. means if if you're starting with a coach who is was a rookie like us, it's going to take some time to build up your stats. Yeah. Wondering if I should just go with the AI's version of the lines here. Oh, no, I don't want to do that because Howard Chuck's on the right wing. I've... Wow, this is not looking good at all for us, honestly. No, no, this looks like a bad year. The good news is the next draft is pretty interesting. 82. I'm trying to think of who that was. That the Pat LaFontaine year? No, that was Doug Gilmore year. Gilmore, right. Well, Gilmore wasn't a, he wasn't a high draft pick, though? No, but we have Scott Stevens, Phil Housley, uh, Dave Anderchuk, Jim Playfair, uh, uh, Jim Kite, because we were just talking about him, Rich yeah. Sutter. I remember Jim, my uncle uh, told me a story about Jim Kite once they were coming, uh, going through an airport at uh, Christmas and the Jets happened to be in the uh, waiting area back when the, you know, the teams didn't have charter flights, they were just flying commercial. And you remember Jim Kite, uh, for those who doesn't know, don't know, was was he completely deaf or like uh, just most, uh, he had hearing aids, that's it, that's right. Yeah. yeah. He had hearing aids, but if he had the hearing aids out, uh, he couldn't tell, uh, he couldn't uh hear anything so I guess he had taken him out in the airport and was having a little nap uh, so he wouldn't be interrupted and you know he had the hearing aid out, aids out and what the guys <laughs> did it's kind of cruel but uh, Michael didn't say which one of the Jets was but somebody took a can of shaving cream and uh, basically emptied it, uh, emptied it on top of, his, off top of his head so he's like you couldn't hear the can uh, going out but uh yeah, you'd wonder why he didn't feel it, but I guess he was sound asleep, wakes up, and he's got this yeah. cone of shaving cream on his head. <laughs> That's good. Unless you're a kite, but... Uh... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the AI suggestions for the power plays for now. But the... Okay, uh, just a follow-up question from, can you have too many assistants? Uh, only in the sense that you'll run out of budget room, uh, and you're not, it's, it's not really going to add anything by having like 20 assistants because it'll, it'll just be the top guys that are contributing to the score. Yep. But you could have five. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. definitely within reason. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we got a also tie there and, but wow, we are train wreck here. Go ahead. Well, just continuing to look at the names for. 82 draft. It was actually fairly deep. In the third round, Ken Reggett, Pat Verbeek. Yep, those guys Kevin will probably Deneen. wind up going first in ours, but... Yeah, Kevin okay. Deneen, uh Mario Goss Gosselin. Dave okay. Elliott went in round four. We are now last in the league after 33 games. Five wins. I don't know what... Uh, you, you wouldn't think that Willie Lindstrom was... Uh, Who's still out for another two months? That big of a, you know, he scored a lot for us last year, though. Yeah, just at the right time. No, well, actually, it looks like Gatsos has done pretty well for us to start with. Uh, five points in nine games, so wasn't a bad pickup. But you know, we just lost to the Leafs eight to five. I will take this to the end of the month. 
My God, we won a couple. Hooray. We won three. Hey, what's going on here? Let's go back quick. Take a quick recap here. Yeah, we uh, we won a couple at home. Islanders and beat the Islanders. That's pretty impressive. Right. Uh, lost to the Hawks, lost to the Wings, and then just turned around and uh, beat Hartford. So a decent way to close out 1981. We are there's just no way we're gonna make. Oh no, the playoffs are top 16 in the league. I think at the. Yeah, this was. No, I'm trying to remember. Was this the, the year that they went to the new playoff system? Regardless, we're way, way out of the playoffs. And let me just see if there's anything interesting going on in the news. Player poll. Did any of our guys win the uh, awards? Not a single one. A few minor deals. Our development report. Oh God, Lukowicz lost two more points. What is going no. on with that guy? He's yeah. That's just you know, sometimes it'll happen. Uh, and just terrible luck, I guess. But he's still three stars. He must just be barely be clinging to that. Uh, don't see any of our other guys going up a star rating at all yet. So this has been. I think I'm going to have to take a look at the training in a second. Just continuing to look. Other guys to look forward to. I said Doug Gilmore, but Ron Hextall and Tony Granado. Also yeah, he yeah, Hextall would be a nice one for us. Uh, Manitoba boy. Yeah. Ran another weekend, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. Yes, he was. So there is some talent. Oh, and Randy Gillen, former Winnipeg <laughs> Jet. Around, he was picked ahead of Ron Hextall. Oops. Ah, gold drafting goalies, though. It's always a crapshoot. Yeah. Let's take a quick look. Uh, I'm just adjusting a training a little bit and took it away from a few guys just to get the bonus up a little higher on some of the uh, existing or some of the players we were already training. Maybe that'll help, uh, but I don't want to mess with things too much right now while we're, since we actually seem to be winning. Let's just take a quick look around the leagues. Since we're at midseason, uh, Canadians doing well again. Good just a, for anybody who hasn't seen that, uh, there is, whoops, one of the league history, not the uh, team history. That's what's happened the uh, first couple of years of the game. The Stars uh, with the upset over the Islanders, I think, in the first uh, cup final. And then Boston won it last year. But looking at this season, uh, Montreal's doing well. The Islanders, not surprisingly. And, yeah, the Oilers have turned it around. They had Gretzky was injured last year, so they didn't do well at all. No. Is, uh, is Bobby Orr still playing? No, he would have been retired. He wasn't. He was retired by the time we started this. And you, are you sure? I was kind of thinking he was not, but I could, I could easily be wrong. Uh, are we talking real life or are we talking in the game? In the game. Almost positive. Let me... I'm, I'm not going to say for sure. I just, for some reason, I was thinking he wasn't. Nope, he's not active. He's All got right. exactly what he did in real life. Ended in 79. As we started one season okay. too late for him to be playing. Yeah, if we if we had started, uh, he would have been uh, playing on Chicago. If we had started one season yeah. before, well, we couldn't have started one season before because there were no Jets. But other than that, uh, where the yeah, it doesn't look like there's any major surprises stats wise. Let's take a look at the scoring leaders. Uh, Jimmy Mann. Say again. We're not pumping a bunch of stuff into Jimmy Man. Yeah, go figure. I am shocked. And uh, well, Bossy's actually a little ahead of Gretzky for the scoring weight. Looks like um, did Gretzky miss a couple of games? Yeah, I think so. He's getting about two points a game. So no other huge surprises. See, yeah, the Leafs are still together. They got McDonald and Sittler. So apparently Ballard hasn't gone crazy in this game. Uh, 
I don't see any jets anywhere in this uh, leader screen. Unless I'm missing one. I doubt it. Definitely There's doesn't look like it, though. So let's see what our own stats are looking like halfway through the year. Matty Hagman, leading scorer again. Uh, it was a great free agent pickup. He's doing a lot better than he actually did. He had kind of washed out of the league by this point. And, oh no, he was a, yeah, he played a little bit in 81, 82. This is, I think, the year he started going downhill. So Lukowicz goes downhill, but Hagman doesn't. So kind don't of say that. We don't need yeah. him going downhill, too. Oh, wow, look at uh, Heck and Lube. First, uh, was a good look. seems to have worked out okay, uh, leaving him in the minors last year. Cause he was got, mad. Yeah, 33 points in 39 games. Start Excellent. the season. Paul Coffey also doing really nicely. Randy Gregg having a good year. Uh, Ron Flockhart, I think he started strong. Uh, oh boy, look at Howard Chuck. 15 points in 39 games. And in real life, he started out with 100 point years for a season. Yes, making Thomas him a cult favorite. Dean also struggling. Uh, Bouchard's numbers aren't too good as a backup. Bergers um, are even worse as a starter. So not much you can do with the goalies. Elderbrink hasn't done particularly well. I think I'll think about putting Melrose in. Game ratings. Other way around. Yeah, Howard Chuck is literally our uh, worst regular player uh, game rating wise. Well, um, there's only two stars, so it's not too surprising. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering now, should we think about maybe uh, sending him effectively back to junior for the year? Oh, wow, now it's, his potential is showing up as two stars. That's crazy. Yes, let's send him down. To, I don't yeah, know that's, what... that's, that's really getting worrying now. So, sorry, Dale. Maybe you'll uh, pick it up a little bit uh, if you get some time in the minors. And that leaves us with a hole at center. And I don't think there's a lot of minor leaguers that can fill that adequately. Uh couple of two-star guys, Scrudelin's two stars, but uh, I really don't want to bring up any more two-stars just because it seems to be uh, well, way too much too soon. Well, there's a two-and-a-half-star guy on for, at free agency talked about earlier. Yeah, Jello, Risto Yellow. Yeah. Uh, it might be a worthwhile pickup. Where the heck is he? I can't find him. Did somebody sign him? Oh, it's possible. Gears Hunt in the chat. Took your advice about the pens lines. Slash philosophy slash tactics. Out shooting my opponents two to one, but losing two out of three games. <laughs> It'll Shoot happen better that way then? sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Be more accurate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I found yellow, but he's he's only two and a half stars and three star potential and <laughs> you know what I'm tempted to decide yeah. here. Uh, Bruce Boudreau is still hanging around as a free agent. Of course he is. He's three stars, so you know, he's a decent scoring center. Uh, Richard uh, Grenier was a WHA guy. I'm surprised his rating is that good as the other three star. Is he a B rated, though? Yeah, B. He's... Yeah, so maybe he's actually a two and a half. Could be. Uh, we may get a surprise if we sign him. Uh, also got Dave Donnelly, two and a half stars. And three potential. Other than that, nobody uh, really quite at the same level. So uh, I think our options are here are Yellow, Donnelly, Brudero. Gord Shervin is three and a half star potential, but he's only one and a half right now, so he's not going to be able to do anything for us right now. Since this is only a short term thing, I think I'm going to go with Brudero because uh, he, he can. Let's hope that three star rating is really accurate. Well, if it's not, the other guy's is accurate at th two and a half and three. Yeah, that. yeah, we can always just, just sign Sorry. them all. But uh, I'll start try it with uh, Boudreaux to start with. He wants fourteen thousand for two years. Yeah, that's fine. And did I not submit that? Forgot to ask for a response. 
What? Now he's asking for 14. I have to manually change it. I'm not sure why he suddenly wanted an extra $400, but hopefully he'll be happy with that. Yep, he, want, he likes that. $400 was very important to him. Yeah, it's the 80s. It went farther back then. Okay, and oh, sim one day. And naturally we start the new year off with the defending Stanley Cup champions. Of course. So Boudreaux goes in for Howard Chuck, and let's see what the AI does with the Howard Chuck less lines. Let's put Ron Wilson on the first line. Eh. Interesting these, choice. These don't look terrible, actually. I think I'm going to try Boudreaux on the uh, second unit point, but I'll leave him on the fourth line otherwise. And yeah, for the most part those look pretty good. Oh, it's a board saying, yeah, board still saying it's disappointing. And let's hope we can keep up that uh, little run we had going through, you know, let's just sim through the end of January and see what that does. Looks like we won another one, and now yet another right wing goes down. Dave Christian's hurt, and it looks like it could be a serious one. Well, sprained wrist, it's only two weeks. That's enough, but not too bad. Yeah, I'll just scratch him. I'm not going to put him on the injured list. And Jimmy Mann gets another chance in the lineup. Well, Jimmy Mann's ready to, you know, score three goals all of a sudden again. I wouldn't count on it. Well, it actually wants to put Mann on the uh, second power play unit. Does Gatso somewhere else? No. Hmm. Uh, okay, I think we can leave it. Oh, we got Boudreau on the point. Boudreau on the point. Yeah, he was a pretty good offensive guy uh, when he was still playing. Uh, just didn't back check well enough to stay in the league. And we're getting, yeah, we're winning a few more games now at least. And now Dave Babbage injured. So it's the injuries that are killing us this year, and he's out for two weeks. At least it's only two weeks. So Barry Melrose gets his chance to get back in the lineup. Prove his worth. And slowly setting these lines back up. Okay, anything else of interest going on? A couple of trades. Oh, Boston traded Wayne Cashman away to Pink to Pittsburgh. Bit of a surprise. He had been there Four. for probably 20 years. Uh, Mario Faubert, who was a pretty good guy for about one or two years, but this was the year that uh, things kind of fell apart for him. Went from being like a 50-point guy. I think he had an injury. And Gretzky's hurt. Triceps <laughs> tendonitis. So the Oilers struggling again, looks like. That's uh, fine. They need to come back to us. No, they're still in first place, though. So I don't think they're coming this far back. <laughs> what how are Pretty we doing good. standings-wise? We're halfway through January, and we are still literally last place overall. So let's hope that... Uh, Improves a Changes. little bit. It'd be nice to have the high draft pick, but uh, I don't like our job security if we finish dead last this year, especially after making the playoffs last year. Well, in all fairness, we shouldn't have made the playoffs last uh, year. Did I miss? Yeah, we just squeezed in. I mean, it was a lot easier to make the playoffs uh, in the early 80s, 16 out of 21 teams. What am I missing? There's the open spot.
team looks pretty good, though. There's lots of good building blocks here. They just and need time. more injuries. Doug Smale and Matty Hagman now. Hagman's only day to day. What is wrong with Smale? Oh, good God, heart palpitations. I think that would end your career. At this point, let's see. We get we get a decent player, and he's having heart problems. That's just what we needed. How long is he out for? Two weeks only. So apparently we're. <laughs> He's just in love. Yeah, we're probably asking for a lawsuit of some kind there. <laughs> yeah, well, so what, you're having some heart problems. Just be back in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Can't be that serious, right? Take Just take a little bit of time off. Cut out the red beets. And you'll be fine. And yeah, we're losing again. And you know, great Boudreaux manages to get hurt now. Day-to-day -day injury, at least. But Tim Waters is... Why are the injuries piling up so bad in this this year? Tim Waters sprains his finger. He's out for six days. Need some better doctors. <sighs> Let's hopefully he's ready to play by the next game, because I think we've got a few days off here. But this is starting to get really problematic. Bruins making yeah, another trade. Uh, Colin Campbell for Lucien Deblois. Really shows our lack of depth in our farm system as well. Yeah. Just going to creep this forward one day at a time and hopefully one of these. Okay, good. Babbage is ready to play again. That's saves us from having to call somebody up Calls. and juggle the lineup around even more. And Dave Christian's back as well. So let's see. Um, so we have three left wings. Yeah, we got three left wings. So scratch him, put Christian in. And other than Smail, I'll Smail. I'm just going to use the AI's lines for a couple of games to get through this quickly because we're going to be getting Smail and Waters back really quickly. Yeah, I hope. And we're running out of time. Oh, yeah, we're coming up on the hour here. So I will just. Uh, but we still got time. And stay by doing. We went and won against Pittsburgh. Not bad. No injuries. Got the Blues up next. I'm just waiting for these two uh, check marks to go away before I switch the lineup up again. And we won against the Blues. See we. Okay, Waters is all right. And how much longer does Smell only has two more days out? And is he back in time for Calgary? And we are, well, other than the injury list, guys. Willie Lindstrom still got another month. But uh, we are back to a sort of healthy lineup. I'd uh, happen at some point. Okay, just shuffling through here, and I'll get my lines redone properly now. For this game with Calgary. Just looking at the stats, roughly, Elderbrink's not doing too badly. Melrose is doing pretty much what he was before. Got to sit one of them. Melrose, well, Melrose has got a couple of 30s in his game ratings, so I think he may be just about done in this league. Yeah. See if he can get a coaching job somewhere. I'm sure that'll work out for him. <laughs> somewhere sometime yeah okay now let's hope this is the last time I have to juggle the lines around for a little while why well, I thought you were enjoying it yeah that's uh, not much fun piecing a lineup together the way we've had to this year no but and we could have set our assistant to do it all development report Uh, nothing terribly interesting there. At least Lukowicz hasn't declined again this month. Hooray. And the board is not terribly thrilled with us. Let's see what the conference yeah. is at. And we're into orange now, so we're slowly going down, but at least the overall expectation is just for us to rebuild, and so we've got time to keep building the team. And what 
we go? We've got a few minutes left here, so I will... And we win against Calgary. So what's the schedule look like so far? What's a good game for us to play to finish this up? Uh, we got a three-game homestand, and the middle one is Montreal, so let's... I will sim right up to that. Looks like we got a few days off in there, actually. Not bad. Probably need it with how bad things have been going. Yeah, we lost against Buffalo there. Usual scouting reports, and okay, we got Montreal today. They've probably been doing really well this season. Yeah, no kidding, uh, 78 points in 55 games. That's pretty darn good. Mm. All right, I'm going to leave the lineup as it is, but I wonder if I should be starting... Bouchard is doing so much better in goal than... Uh, Berdur has this year, so I'm going to try him in for this game. And Canadians, uh, yeah, Don Bropri, they picked him up, him up in the draft last year, and he wound up playing, uh, really had a really good year for them as a rookie, and other than that, it looks like their lineup is really similar to uh, what they had in real life. Oh, they picked up Bob Daly at some point, apparently. He was injured this year. I think he was his career was kind of on the downside at this point in real life, but maybe he's doing a little bit better for him. Other than that, yeah, your typical early 80s Canadians. Guy Carbon was up already. That's a bit of a surprise. But yeah, this is a much better team than us. So, But they blew us out in the first round of the playoffs this year, so maybe we can get some, re or last year, so maybe we can get a little bit of revenge here. And I will just leave it on scoring summary like uh, I had it for the first game. It is a home game for us, so maybe we can do a little bit uh, better here. But it looks like Montreal is going to get the first one, and Doug Jarvis tips it in. Yep. one nothing already. Two minutes and 18 seconds into the game. Hmm. Yeah, we might be getting one here, unless it's going to turn around and go in a breakaway in the other direction. And Tom Steen gets one to tie it up. Very nice. Excellent. Yeah. And that's what was also desperately needed as well. Yeah, we're still hanging in here. Still 1-1. One, one. Uh, oh, we got... Oh, we're going to get ahead here, maybe. Yep, Matty Hagman. 2-1 Jets. So, this season may not be over yet. Likely, but maybe yeah. not quite. Well, let's see what we can do to screw up our draft pick. And Montreal <laughs> ties it up. We're really getting outshot badly here, 18 to 6 right now. But we end the period uh, tied 2 2. Starting the next one up. And I can't complain too much about uh, the way we played so far. We're getting outshot badly, but uh, face offs were even and not taking a lot of dumb penalties. No, that's key too. Oh, nice. Uh, Right off a of face-off, uh, loose puck, LaFleur puts it in. Oh, he was injured. I guess it wasn't too bad. No, he must have just got back. But the Jets may be bouncing right back. Brad Palmer, Tim Waters, Ron Wilson, to Hacken Lube, Elderbrink. And Anders Elderbrink gets a goal for us. I think that's, I don't think that was, yeah, it's the second of the year, so not his first NHL goal, but... Uh, Good one for the rookie. Just a second. Yep. It's a good thing uh, Beaupre is not having a good night because we're 
tied 3-3 and we're getting outshot 25 to 7 but I think <laughs> we're about to go behind here again Montreal's throwing oh, wait now it's a first line out now Pierre LaRouche Wow, oh, they're throwing this one around a lot. Surprised there hasn't been a goal by now. Oh, right there. See them. They scored a great off the faceoff again. Mark Napier this time. Of course they did. Just looking where they're getting the goals from. Everything is, like, on the outside and fairly low. Nothing from the middle of the ice. Oh, don't tell me they're going to score off the faceoff again. No, oh, man. Uh, maybe we'll turn around for a breakaway. You never know. No, of course not. Pierre LaRouche, and it's 5-3 Montreal, and we're halfway through the game. Hey, we finally got a show. We were actually down. We had a, they had a two-man advantage, and we, least it, we didn't get scored on there, so that's something. But outshot 31-9 at this point. 31-10. We're rallying. Oh, maybe we actually are. We got it uh, in there and... And something's going on here. And Lube knocks it in, so 5-4. All right. Where this game is much closer than it should be. The shot, look at the shot chart. It's ridiculous. Yes, badly out shot, but... Yeah. Hey, okay. someone's got to win. 5-4 going into the third. Can we pull off the miracle? Absolutely. Gotta have faith. Hey, regardless, we're playing pretty well against a team that's probably one of the two or three best in the league. Yeah. And hey, what's happening on here? And Ron Flockhart ties it up. Go Jets, 5-5. Five, five. We may just get out of this with one point. Here's hoping. Ten minutes to go, and 5-5, uh, five, five, and we're slowly creeping up on the shot chart. But no chances yet. Oh, what do we got going on here? Hey, look at this, and Matty Hagman makes it 6-5 Jets. All right. Come on, six minutes. You can hold on to this. There's no way you can blow this now, guys. We believe in you? Three minutes to go. Two minutes to go. One minute, Montreal goal. No, they haven't pulled a goal yet. Did we control it all the way through? And it's 6-5 Jets, final score. Uh, knock it off one of the best teams in the league and the guys who knocked us out last year. So I think that is a fine place to wind up the broadcast uh, for this week. Let's take a quick look at the game. Uh, another bad game for the third. Wow, Scott Campbell, game rating of 32. Ouch. So, yeah, we'll have to take a look through our uh, stats, I think, when we get back to this in a couple of weeks. But right now, I will be satisfied with that two points. And the Jets are only 20 points out of fifth place in the Norris. <laughs> yeah, not so good. And Nothing's league, impossible. And we're still dead last in the league. Uh, five points behind the Canucks. And the Islanders, yeah, the usual suspects atop. Islanders, Canadians, Stars. And the Oilers with Gretzky doing much better this year. I hurt Gretzky, though. Yeah, and oh, it looks like Bouchard got a minor injury, sprained his ankle in that game. So i just going to remember to switch him up so he's back. Our injuries. Uh, Willie Lindstrom has another 19 days, so he'll be back hopefully beginning of March. And we may be able to salvage some tiny amount uh, from this season, but not looking too great. Okay, I think we can wind it up there, Adam. All right. Well, thank you once again for tuning into another Franchise Hockey Manager 2 stream. Uh, we stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on www.twitch.tv slash OOTP developments. You might be watching this on our archive which is on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash OOTP developments. Or maybe you got the link from our Facebook page, which our Facebook page is facebook.com slash franchise hockey manager. Maybe our Twitter, which is at franchise hockey. Or 
perhaps you were talking hockey with us, learning more about FHM2, different things in hockey, or wanting to know more information about are the upcoming franchise hockey manager three which is on our forums which is ootdevelopments.com yeah the talk about yeah. it is on the forums the game is not on the forums yet yeah the, the, no no yeah. no <laughs> game's not out yet it's still being worked on yep every day but there is news coming sometime soon yep. fairly soon i think i will actually be over in uh, germany sometime next month and doing some heavy duty developmental stuff uh, to get it moving right along but we will have some news for you fairly shortly i think yes and i think those are, i don't think i missed anything did i jeff uh, i think you got everything no nope. so All we'll right. be back i guess next week with the uh, modern version of the jets who don't lose 15 to 20 games in a row no not quite very often no much better all right, well, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.